Hi everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Weekly Sync for Monday the 27th of April 2020. Uh, I am your host, I am Kim Brain on the internet, and Alex in real life. Uh, we're going to go through our high priority initiatives and give updates on what's going on. Very exciting stuff. So, um, the first one is upcoming and shipped releases. The big news is GoIPFS 0.5. Uh, can someone tell us what's going on with that? Yes, we are in the process of uh, prepping everything for release tomorrow. Um, there is a big note in there about the DHT. Um, Steve wants to go go over that. Um, basically, we're not going to be running two protocols. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the TLDR is that we tried to launch Hydra uh, and try to get to take a load of the network um, on uh, Friday, uh, and or I guess Thursday and Friday. Uh, and it, it did not take a little of that approval. Um, uh, we feel like we could still make this work in theory, um, but it'll take more work to uh, get the infrastructure to scale up to the point where we can actually receive all the connections. Uh, because, yeah, when people are constantly providing lots of content, you get hundreds of thousands of connections a second, or of um, that request a second. So it's, yeah, our input's not scaling. Uh, so the TLDR is new code. But same old protocol version. That means the performance in the RCs, unfortunately, will be the same as the performance on the live network until people start upgrading. So uh, when we cut this release, we're going to start telling people, please upgrade, please upgrade, please upgrade, please upgrade. Um, uh, and beyond that, we may start also like pushing out nodes uh, that um, are running the old version. Uh, so, for example, like the next release may have some rules around like saying, hey, like if you don't appear to be a good uh, DHT node, like you're running an old version, uh, like I think you're behind a NAT, I've checked your routing table and it appears to be both the empty or most people bad peers, that kind of stuff. Then we may just like drop it from the routing table. Uh, this is tricky to do uh, because if we do too much of this, then like we end up actually breaking the network more than we fix it. Because like if, if, if some peers have a view of the network where they see, um, where they think certain peers in the network and other peers have a view of the network where they don't think peers in the network, you can end up like putting and getting contact to different peers. Uh, yeah, we may also do the protocol switch in a future release if necessary. Um, but basically, we it out for now. Uh, the other thing I have to say about 0.5 is that we have a release party on Friday. Uh, please check your calendars. Um, everyone is invited. It is a virtual release party, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, we're going to get together. Ideally, eat tasty things, talk about things, hang out, do presentations. What well, um, so when it gets released and we encourage people to upgrade. What happens if people don't upgrade? Well, then we get annoyed. Um, so if, if a lot of people don't upgrade, uh, then the problem is like basically the people who are not upgrading will continue to join the DHC, um, even if they're behind NATs. And also like they're usually not properly maintain their routing tables. Um, uh, so like basically they'll be bad actors. Um, ideally we build a route around them. Uh, so like the other or changes we are making in the next release should help with this a bit. One is like if we start having quick by default, that means we can start dialing more and basically having more parallelism. We can also change how we use our parallelism, the DHT, uh, to sort of like run these nodes faster. Um, uh, again, as I was saying before, like we can have good nodes or like ping each other and determine like if like if other nodes in the network are like misbehaving and if they are, sort of like hide them, drop them. Um, if necessary for like really old nodes, uh, we could start like rejecting them at the bootstrappers. <laughs> Um, we don't want to do that because that's not very nice and that means they can't use the network period. Uh, but we do have some nodes that are still using like 0 .4 .14. Um And if you've ever seen a, like a, a pair that has like a million addresses, usually this, this, this as far as I know, comes from like older nodes that are like remembering too many like observed addresses for peers and they never forgetting them. Um, yeah, so like, I'd like to, that's like the, the, the last resort that we'd like to not do uh, because like, that's not nice. Um, but we will take whatever steps necessary to fix the network. So you say that it's going to, we might need some changes in the next release. Does that mean that we're going to see like DHT degradation between now and like 10.6? Uh, I know we, we don't see, well, sorry, we won't see any DHT degradation. So we will see, the DHT will operate, okay. Uh, the DHT can only go up from here basically. Uh, like as more people upgrade to 0.5, it'll get better. Um, and the 0.5 code, against the current DHT is already much, much better than the 0.4 code against the current DHT. 
Uh, so like we're definitely making lots of big improvements. But when it's like if a lot of people don't upgrade, then it's not going to get as good as our like uh, our test ground tests. Like we've done a bunch of tests saying, okay, what if everyone is running new code? If everyone's running dirty code, it's great. Um, if like not everyone's running the new code and but we're all using the same protocol, then it's basically it's as good as like the current test against the live network. If you like if you try to like resolve content on your local node recently. A question from David. What has been the largest new DHT test that has been done? Uh, and then the, the follow on is the number of nodes in the network tests, test on the live networks. How into We've been? done 2K, I believe, Adin, right? Yeah, uh, 1K pretty stably. 2K has been uh, working last time I tried it. Uh, we've done some tests on the live network as well. Um, obviously, that's it is both it is both different and and in some ways more indicative and more indicative of what it will be on the during the release now that we know we're not doing the protocol rollover um most of the test ground tests were done either on like pure old protocol pure new protocol we had some that were done with a mix of the two um but there's less of an emphasis there because the plan was to do the rollover Turns out that as you scale the network, uh, as more people upgrade, performance will improve for everyone, not just the people who have upgraded. So uh, even if you're selfish and don't feel like upgrading because you have some arcane dependency, tell your friends, it'll make your thing faster. <laughs> nice. Uh, I guess follow up question to that one is, uh, I'm curious, like, did you get to use test ground to test the live network? Like when you spin like a thousand nodes? Okay, no. You, you no, kept it test ground has like a separate networking thing that separates it out from everyone else. Yeah, although we did actually somewhat test the live network using um, uh, Hydra, no, because we just we stuck Hydra on the live network, um, but we weren't doing like large scale query tests. But that's also mm -hmm. when we decided to pull it because we found that actually like when we mixed in Hydra, the queries were not nearly as fast as they should have been um, mm -hmm. uh, because the Hydra nodes were just like massively overloaded and couldn't accept new connections, couldn't process new requests, that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. There's like a yeah. I saw some of those notes. Uh, another question, and I'm not sure if I can just like bombard questions here or if I should wait. <laughs> uh, okay. We can uh, wait till the end. Uh, we have the question section. Uh, okay. Sure. Of course. Definitely get through everything first. Okay. Quick update from the. Uh, Coming releases for JSRP first is going to be a patch release, like imminently, um, which uh, will fix some regressions with uh, DHT, the DHT API uh, over HTTP. Um, I'm just trying to figure out why we've got some really weird test failures um, in CI that obviously are impossible to replicate later. You know, they're called the best ones. Um, so some of the GC tests have gone a bit wonky uh, on Windows, which I've managed, actually haven't managed to replicate locally. So, you know. That will get to um, and then that release will come up. Uh, so moving on, next uh, next initiative is content routing. Yeah, so the big items here, obviously the 0.5 release, which we talked about. Um, and then we've also kicked off work for 0.6. Um, this is moving into our, our six week release cycles. So that's kicked off, um, 0.5 will have the priority there. Um, but we will create the release issue for tracking everything after the 0.5 launch. Um, and then I will jump into noise in ad 5519 These were a separate line item, but they're content routing related, um, at least for the team. So I pulled them up into this for now. Um, I added a tracking issue for the JS side of things in JS WP. Um, so I'm just tracking everything there for both of those because I'm just creating myself a crypto JS work stream to fix and do things. Um, so if you're interested in following along there, you can look at that. Um, for noise, there is a blocking issue. Um, the Go WP daemon needs to get updated with the latest noise. Um, so I will coordinate with somebody to make sure that that gets done. Um, yeah. And then my goal is to get uh, interop testing for noise. I would like IPFS testing to start happening uh, by next week so that we are ready well in advance of the 0.6 RC. And that's the tentative update there. This is going to fix the invalid MAC address error that we see in CI occasionally. Isn't it? We'll see. Uh, 
Anyone else for content routing? Hydra boosters? Anything? Is it Hydra? Someone's put an emoji in. I know who that is. Yeah, sorry. Uh, that's that's my habit. Um, all right. So quickly, I think we've talked a little bit about this already. Um, but we the Hydra boosters we scaled up to around ten Hydras, two hundred and fifty heads each. Uh, that was many, many heads, and uh, for the machines that we had, um, that was that was too many, and they were not happy. Uh, the the spec of the machine was just not enough, and or perhaps we didn't have um, enough machines, but we had hit our digital ocean limits, and they didn't get back to me for two straight days, so I wasn't able to upgrade them. Uh, so that's annoying, uh, but nevertheless, the we 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 tested that. It then out of view to rolling the network over to the new DHT protocol, and um, there was problems with like latency, uh, doing queries and connecting to these these things. And partly because of the 250 head thing, but when we scaled them down to 50, we were still seeing that issue. So there's something up that needs to be debugged um, that I'm hoping to spend a whole load of time on this week. Um, aside from that, the shared Postgres provider store is now looking stable. Uh, th that means that all Hydras that we have, so not just Hydra heads, um, all Hydras will share the same data store that has provider records in it. So uh, rather than sharing, like for every Hydra, we had like a million records in the, in the data store. Uh, but now we've got all of the Hydras sharing around 4 million records and there's no duplicates. So that's, that's good. Um, and also having a separate data store allowed us to have a persistent persistent data store. So if the hydras went down and came back up again, then the, the data would still be there. Previously, we were just using a level DB uh, in a Docker container that was wiped when when they went down and up. So uh, that's good. Um, and so yeah, that's that's looking good. Um, that involved some debugging of like uh, deadlocks and things, uh, which which was good fun. Um, and so now, yeah, onto like really trying to evaluate Hydra effectiveness and um, figure out any remaining issues that there are with um, with running uh, many many Hydra heads and uh, hopefully coming to some good conclusions. Cool. Uh, so moving on, subdomain gateway, uh, base thirty two origin isolation from model. Uh, no big update uh, this week. I paused the JS uh, IPFS work for a few days to focus on IPFS desktop to be ready for 0.5, which will ship subdomain gateways to desktop users. So I guess that's related. <laughs> um, I think that's it. We've fixed a small UX issue with directory listing, but I think Steven scheduled that to 0.6, right? So, okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, uh, BitSwap updates? Yes, um, so BitSwap is pretty much ready to go. So we, we found we had an issue where uh, we were creating sessions for every single block and that resulted in us uh, broadcasting every single block. So uh, that's been fixed now. And we also had a timing issue. Uh, so we were getting a lot more duplicate blocks than we should have been getting. So we've also fixed that. So I think that's uh, pretty much ready to go. Uh, did you get anywhere looking into why the uh, interface tests uh, seem to have been broken by uh, JS? Yes, uh, there's, a, there's a PR there. I can talk about it with you offline. Cool. Is it my PR? Uh, well, it's one that I made, but uh, you've been, you and I have been kind of going back and forth on it. All right, uh, stream-based content chunking and research improvement. Yes, uh, so uh, last week I kind of gave the first demo of the uh, finalized UI, uh, how everything is supposed to look, and actually nothing exploded, so that was interesting. 
Um, I am currently chasing one more uh, bug in the library that implements an async uh, read at least interface of sorts, uh, which is a library that has been extracted already from Dagger. Uh, also, am also finalized both the uh, general chunker interface and the general linker interface, uh, everything kind of fell together once uh, once things were factored for, for the hundredth time. Um, and yeah, uh, hopefully I will have a point one uh, release sometime before the, the release party on Friday. But, uh, you know, I... Uh, I'm not counting my chickens yet. Uh, there are a few, like everything that has been found so far as a problem has been explained the way, like, yes, this was a, a clear bug. This makes sense. Uh, there are a couple more things that are behaving strangely when I uh, spin this on a 30 core system. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what's taking most of the time. But yeah, looking looking great, and uh, the final version of the interface is actually something that is going to be easier to integrate into YPFS than I originally thought. So uh, between there, we can talk this over with Steven already, but uh, it might be that some of this stuff will even land into 07. So that's all I have. Cool. Uh, Rust? No Rust Initiative? What's going on? Yeah, hey, folks. Um, over the next few weeks, we're going to be moving towards uh, Unix FS support, which is something that we've got from uh, some community people that want to use Rust FPFS, particularly not in the, I want to say embedded, but not like firmware, but more like really constrained small Linux environments that run on like industrial IoT devices and stuff. So that's what we'll be working on next and getting that. Uh, support in, and uh, that's all from us. That would be a, a super interesting talk for the um, the IPFS weekly. I think that kind of applications of IPFS in hardware constrained environments. And that kind of yeah, I think um, I think I registered for like a demo on one of the upcoming calls in like May or something. So maybe we can show some of that off there too. That'd be cool. Awesome. Uh, next up is Peerstar improvements in JS land. Yeah, so Peerstar in JS, uh, the milestone two with peer info removal is now complete. All the PRs were merged uh, in the libp2p modules and they are now released as beta for the time being. The JS libp2p PR was also merged in the 028 branch and we will uh, basically release all of them at the same time. Uh, also related with this peer info removal, uh, basically, we were using before the peer info for providing the listing addresses for Libp2P, which was kind of strange and not that cool. So uh, I created also, uh, related to this, an address manager component uh, PR, so that basically we can provide similarly to GoLibP2P and the GoIPFS listen, announce, and no announced addresses for Libp2P. This is also currently being reviewed by Jacob, so this is probably merged this week as well. Then uh, in the milestone tree with the persistence for address book and protobook, the initial implementation is also uh, ready for review. There, I think there are a couple of open questions that uh, we will need to make some decisions, but I'm conf confident that it, we pro will probably get this merged this week as well. So also meanwhile, this week I will start to work on the fourth and the last milestone on these initial improvements for the peer store which will include the keybook and also integrating uh, lipid to chain on it. And that's it. Cool. Uh, so um, cancel all requests in JSRPFS, that's the next one. So uh, this is implemented and tested in the CLI and the call. Um, it's just the, the HTTP test to go. Uh, it's enormous. Like, I think a couple of arguments to every single API call is uh, a massive change. Who knew? Um, 
yeah, well, it is enormous. So uh, yeah, that's why it's taking so long. And it would be lovely to get that. I really want to get it in by the end of the week so that we can concentrate on the bits of stuff. Um, that would be rad. Has anyone got any questions? Is it threaded through everything? Yeah. The whole stack? Well, so it's the timeouts are done at the very at the core. So the CLI and everything calls into the core timeouts are there. Um, but the signal is passed all the way down to at least the block store right now. Um, so there is PRs at the most, IPLD and the block store. And then the next thing would be to do a uh, bit sort after that. So everything should get a signal, whether or not it pays any attention to it or not is another matter. So we can, that's the kind of thing that we can improve over time. Yeah. Cool, so the uh, other initiatives, uh, UNIXFS v1.5 in Go IPFS, any updates? It is being worked on, but it's all plays. I think I saw the, um, the person who's responded to the bounty for us had some kind of like external pressures that mean that they haven't had the time to spend on it um, that they wanted, but they're trying to pick it up again now. Uh, ad performance, uh, no update there for me. Uh, migration to multi hash keys in the block store. Uh, Hector? Um, no progress, but I want to set up a meeting with a bunch of people this week to, to decide what to do with this. And I will put links to the relevant discussion and to all the things that have happened uh, there this week or next week, we'll see how the calendars uh, look. Excellent. It will be great to get that one nailed down. Uh, that is it for the initiatives. Uh, next up is design review proposals. Would anybody like to propose anything for a design review? Um, yeah, I, I'd like to get feedback on both like the general idea and implementation for how to do um, sort of a gradual DHT protocol rollover instead of this like switch everything all at once. Um, in particular, I want to have a like effectively a test net that will operate and be compatible with the existing network so that we can get people testing uh, any protocol changes like long before a release comes out. Um, I will, I, I sort of have the drafts for this. I will put it into a GitHub issue and attach it to the document. Cool. The next session is blockers and asks. Answer the questions. A quick time check. We've got three minutes left. Um, so if anybody needs to drop off in three minutes, please do feel free. Uh, but questions. So what happened uh, with the pinning system revamp proposal? Uh, so that's, well, so the JS one is still open. Um, I want to pick it up soon. It's slated in the, the release um, roadmap. is basically cancel requests, then the bit swap improvements and then pinning. So that's kind of, yeah. So we're gonna to get to it next week or the week after, I think. Uh, Hector. Thank you. A uh, question from David. The DHT v1 versus v2 and the multitude of plans that we have over time is both an epic engineering war story and something that is not trivial to understand. To what level of detail will we explain it to users? How can we be sure they don't interpret it as we are breaking backwards compatibility? Well, so, sorry, that has been answered in chat and I posted all the answers there, but feel free to explain. Okay, basically my point is like, yeah, we, like, yeah, we did actually consider just the whole like break everything approach, uh, which was switch the new DHT version and just like reject all nodes. 
um, we explicitly did, did not go with that, which is why we are not changing the vertical version. Um, Let yeah. me understand that a little bit better. So if we get a hungry person like running, like they just install IPFS desktop, which is at 0 0.5, but their mm -hmm. like infrastructure still has 0 0.4.22, mm -hmm. will they be able to find Yes, Everything? it was true both with the old proposal and with how it is currently, but the way it is currently, there's like no room for ambiguity because there's only one protocol version. Like there is no new protocol. There are only old nodes running better query logic and routing table logic. Uh, yes, with small ambiguity. Um, if the old nodes are on the same private network but don't have public addresses, then in the past, you would route requests to request your old nodes using the private network, but that was broken anyways, because like, you would then tell other people to try to connect to these private nodes and that wouldn't mm. work. And you would publish your records as private nodes and people couldn't find them. So mm -hmm. this release actually would unbreak that. Um, but yeah, otherwise, like, yes, basically, the old DHC and the new DHC are the same DHC. There is no breaking there. The plan mm -hmm. was to make it, was to have a sort of a break where like, the, the old, the new DHC was a subset of the old DHC, such mm -hmm. that like, it was, an, it was overlapping enough uh, that any puts the old DHC would also go to the new DHC and any puts the new DHC would always be accessible from the old DHC. Yeah. Uh, but we couldn't get to the point where we could have like a big enough subset to really do that properly. Gotcha. So I think one of the things that I'm not sure if I, has been considered and dropped to, I'll just ask a question is, so right now, like we rely on the, um, of the node, it's kind of like self-identifying, uh, itself as like an atom node and therefore not joining mm -hmm. a DHT protocol. Um, what if there was like a, a, a server mode, like an infrastructure mode where we could like enable in our bootstrappers, our gateways, like Infura, et cetera, where if you have a node connecting to you and you can see that you cannot dial to that node in another port because that node is behind a net, you would not include that node in your DHT routing table. Yeah, that's what I was talking about with the testing, where like, yeah, there, there are a bunch of things we, or health checks we could do that we have to mm -hmm. consider and then we may end up doing. We, we put them out of this because we thought, oh, we'll get them to upgrade. Now we might actually do them. Or like one is dial back. The problem is like, we don't want to do this for every single peer we see, but we could do it, okay, like if we decide maybe we want to add them to our routing table. Um, uh, the other thing we can do is like, we can make queries it's against them and see like, hey, like, is your routing table full of good peers? We can make a query and then try to dial the peers that, that we got from you. It's like, hey, like, are you properly filtering your, your routing table? But all of these things are expensive. Um, mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that like, we do them very carefully. Quick should also help with this because it makes dials a lot less expensive. It makes connections a lot less expensive. Um, yeah. uh, and that's coming in the next release. But of course, we'll be able to dial these old nodes running quick. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you. But again, actually, I want to highlight there is always a problem with this for like, if different nodes are applying these rules differently um, and there's enough of like a disconnect between like what some nodes, nodes think are good and what other nodes think are good, then like you get basically different views in the network where if I end up, if I have an older node and I traverse the network through some older set of peers, I will put to one set of peers. If I then traverse the network through a different set of peers, I will try to put or get from a different set of peers, which means that you won't like, like you'll end up degrading the service of the network. Um, so when you, when you make these changes, you still need to get like a large portion of the network to start like following these rules. It's also worth noting that like some of these rules are like hard and we'll have to like figure out later. Uh, in particular, um, China is hard. Uh, government has this great firewall thing that makes it so that connections between the country and places outside of it operate differently than connections inside of the country. Um, and so you could end up in scenarios where like some people think other people are dialable and others do not, um, which could lead to like odd network, network shapes. How did you but test that? How do how you test you that? that? Yeah. You, well, we have many users in China. Yeah, we we have a ton of users in China. Yeah, so you can look. There, are, I I started on a crawler uh, last week to sort of graph the network distribution, 
Uh, Will has started on some crawler stuff to show like where all of the nodes are. Hopefully we will be able to glue these two things together and then we can see if the network distribution and shape has any <laughs> correlation the nodes actually are. And then we'll get a better picture of how this looks. Sounds good. Um, so we are over time now. Uh, so I think we can call this meeting closed. Uh, thank you for coming, everyone. This has been the IPFS uh, core weekly sync for Monday, April 28th, the 27th, sorry, 2020. Uh, it's been amazing. You've all been really great. There's been awesome progress. We're very much looking forward to go IPFS 0.5. Amazing. And also, like, you know, enjoy your uh, isolation haircuts, everyone, because we're going to be able to, like, gel some crazy, crazy shapes soon, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, see you all on the internet. Bye.